Disclaimer before we get into anything, I am literally a nobody on the internet. <laughs> I have no qualifications legally, medically, to be saying anything, diagnosing any person, probably. However, I'm probably trustworthy. Anyway, hi, I'm Paige Leal. That's, those are my qualifications, who I am as a human person. I'm autistic. This is just my own research and experience in life and I think that I provide valuable insight. Second of all, <laughs> so we've got, now that that's out of the way, here's the thing. Y'all know that I'm, you know, big into autism in girls and specifically because me being, you know, like looking like how I do, I was diagnosed autism like way later than I should have been. And because of like my story and my life, whatever, and how I just decided to talk about it on the internet, I've now, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot more people since then who have shared with me that they have like the same story that they've had the same experience and since then so I guess like I've been on the internet doing stuff for three and a half years so many more people are autistic man <laughs> there are so many autistic people out here I'm like Paige am I seeing patterns where there aren't patterns and am I just making all of this up but I'm like uh it's getting proved like the people that I'm like uh, that's an autistic person they then are autistic I'm like huh yeah I myself as an autistic person I also have ADHD I've got like 85 different things going on, but I attract neurodivergent people. They're people who understand my brain and I understand theirs. I don't have to like fake it or try or anything with them. They're just people who are naturally around me. Plus, because I'm neurodivergent, I exist in neurodivergent spaces, which are where other neurodivergent people flock to. So I think it's kind of natural that I am surrounded by people who I'm pretty sure are autistic all the time. <laughs> now I do just want to take a minute and thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community community with thousands of inspiring creative classes, which I'm sure you already knew because I've talked about Skillshare a million times, but did you know that they also have hundreds of career focused classes as well? Skillshare can help you find new career possibilities that go in line with your learning journey. I love to learn, especially anything that helps my business. So I like taking classes that focus on being your own boss productively, <laughs> how to be a creative full-time boss and do it for real. <laughs> there is no better time or place to not have a traditional job. And whether that is building on skills that you already have or learning a whole new skill, Skillshare has the classes for you. Like if you take photos and think about maybe wanting to make that into a living, check out how to turn your photography hobby into a career with Alan Lavery and learn more about your image, finding work, investing, and lots more. Or maybe you wanna start marketing on TikTok. Check out Mastering TikTok. Stop scrolling and post your first TikTok by Taylor Lauren, which explains how TikTok works and how to make TikToks, including how to edit them. The first 1,000 viewers who click the link down below are going to get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start getting ahead on your creative and career goals today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now we will continue with the rest of the video. My favorite thing ever is kids. Kids are my shit. Kids are the best. I'm the best with kids. Don't mean to toot my own horn, but I was meant to be a teacher for kids of some kind. That's my life purpose. All my life since I have been old enough to not be considered a kid, <laughs> even when I was like little, little, I'm like, I want to babysit <laughs> so bad. I want to take care of kids. But so I'm 23 almost. And since I was like 10, 11, I have been volunteering at camps for little kids. When I got to be an older teenager, I started running my own theater arts camp. When I was in grade 11, I was an EA for a grade one classroom. And I primarily taught those kids reading. And it was so neat. I was only there, like just in a grade one classroom, but just how much the kids changed in just those few months was amazing. But it also was so incredible to see how grade ones operate nowadays. And I remember me in grade one, like it was yesterday, grade one was a pivotal moment in my life. And I'm like, what the heck? I was not like these kids. These kids are kids. I was an adult in grade one. Like I, whoa, weird. But not every kid is like that. There are some kids that are like me. And over the plenty of years and the thousands thousands of kids that I've taught or interacted with. Yeah, there are a good amount of them that have been like me, especially because I teach in the arts primarily. I always have. Even right now, I'm a dance teacher. Uh, and then it was like theater arts camps. And the arts are typically a very neurodivergent heavy space. Dance is a very neurodivergent space. I've talked about this on my TikTok, but I think that a lot of dancers, like 
so people that need to dance, people whose body needs to move all of the time and they pursue dance forever and ever, they probably have ADHD and or autism. No neurotypical does that. <laughs> no neurotypical needs to do that. Like autistic people need to spin around and stim and like have that vestibular movement. ADHD people need to move. They need change. They need challenge. They need more. So yeah, big time in the dance world. And that's where I am right now. That's where I spend a lot of my time in the dance world. I've seen little, like little girls who were like three, four, now they're like 15 and it's like, whoa, that's crazy because you are definitely a different person entirely than you were when you were a kid. Holy crap, I need to talk about it. So I've discovered a pipeline, I think, of autistic girls from little kids to about the age of like being a preteen, about when they hit puberty. There have been a few like little girls, especially over the years that I've developed like really close bonds with. And now that I'm older, hmm, I realized that those little kids that I'm like, man, this little kid is the shit. Like you are so smart and cool and you like me so much. And I like you so much. Like I like hanging out with you. Those kids changed at when they were around preteens and I realized oh my god they were autistic they were autistic they were autistic this whole time these kids were autistic the whole time ah that was something that I noticed about all of these little girls that like I had a super good connection with I just thought you can communicate so well and I always thought you know it was a a me thing kind of because I, I'm like I'm good with kids and so I'm like I really get you you know I'm just really good at getting you well it turns out that's right but also I'm really good at getting you specifically because we have like the same brain <laughs> I was you I know what you're saying and also the things that you are saying out loud the way that you describe your life and your experiences are well beyond what your comprehension should be I didn't really fully grasp this until it was in that grade one classroom because when I was in grade one I was like whipping books. I'm hyperlexic, right? So hyperlexia is just, I can read anything, any, anywhere, every time, all the time, all the time. And so when I'm reading in this grade one classroom, because I was like my job, I'm like, oh my God, every kid is dumb. And no, and they're not dumb. But I'm like, what the heck? None of these kids are like me. Like all of these kids are kids. And I was not like this. I did not speak like this. I did not think like this. I did not play like this. Every kid in that class, what it was, it was beyond, it honestly, it hit me because it made me feel sad for me because they were kids like they were supposed to be and they were happy and doing normal kid stuff and talking about kid stuff. And I was never like that at that age. I remember being in grade one and, and, and a kid like t telling me how stressed out I was all the time and how he's like, you know, relax in grade one, like six years old. And these kids in that class, like they weren't, you think they were freaking out? No, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. Here it is, here's the pipeline. The pattern that I've noticed, undiagnosed autistic girls from like little kid, kid to like preteen. So starting off the ages zero to three, when they're like a baby baby, autistic baby girls are incredibly fussy and colicky. Oh, my mom was like, you had colic, you had colic. And I'm like, what the fuck is colic? You know, look it up. And they're like, just when a baby cries for no reason. What? That doesn't exist. Babies cry for a reason. Always. The fuck? Autistic baby girls are colicky. Sensorily, diapers and pooping and peeing on yourself and rashing yourself sucks. I recall being an infant and how just absolutely uncomfortable you are all of the time. Every time you moved, every time I moved my legs, my torso, I was rubbing up against this awful diaper that made noises, that like scratched and burned my skin, that rubbed my own shit deeper into my skin and my rashes. Like being a baby's not comfortable. People pick you up all the time. You have to like, they, they make you get naked and then get wet and then put clothes on and you're just like, you're too small to do anything or say words. You just got here and people are just like flip flopping you around all the time. Yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna scream. My butt hurts like crazy. And then when you put Vaseline on me, I can feel the Vaseline on my skin, mom. Like you gotta rub it in. You know, being a baby's fucking hard and autistic baby girls are having a hard time. And so you might be like, oh my God, this baby's freaking crying all the 
the time and screaming. There's a hint, okay. <laughs> and now as they get into like their twos and threes, they're bossy. They are very like demanding, controlling. They need to be in charge. They tell you what to do. They need to decide everything for themselves. They are going to choose what they wear. They are going to choose what they eat. They are going to bah, 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 bah. Now, this is common for toddlers in general at this stage to need to start feeling independent. Toddlers begin to be like, oh my God, I'm a person. I'm a human person. Like, what the fuck? I can make human person choices. Ah, that's great. That's wonderful. But autistic toddlers specifically, because a lot of autistic people also have PDA. And so PDA, um, pathological demand avoidance. It's not uh, like whatever the PDA stands for in the other sense. Anytime someone tells you what to do or anytime you feel a loss of control, like someone else is controlling you or that you lose your sense of autonomy in any way, it's no, you can't, can't that can't happen. It's like a fire inside of me that uh, it will not happen and when you are a toddler that's when you start to be able to voice those concerns <laughs> and say no I'm gonna pick what I want to wear do you think I actually want to pick what I want to wear no I hate that I hate that decision I don't every day I struggle with that still I'm 23 and I, I struggle with that but I wanted to pick what I wanted to wear because I didn't want to be controlled anymore it was really fucking hard and if that's all I could control when I'm two years old then that's what I will fucking control Tip for any parent going through that stage, especially when it comes to outfits, um, dresses or like one pieces are pretty dope because a lot less choice if it's just like one outfit, right? I loved dresses until I had to go to school and then wear snow pants in the winter because you can't wear dresses with snow pants. The dress just hikes all the way up and then my legs were touching the cold snow pants. And I'm like, fuck that, never wearing a dress ever again. <laughs> Around this age too, uh, when they're like two, three, that's when you can start noticing like, okay, this kid's fucking brilliant. A lot of autistic girls are so smart for their age, especially in this, like when they're little kids. Specifically, I mean, like just the way that they speak about their view on life. The things that they notice, the patterns that they see are way more than they should be, <laughs> are like way deeper and introspective than they should be at that age. They probably are starting to like memorize things, like me ca memorize categories of something, memorize facts and be able to start listing those off. That's also, that's partially why they're so brilliant. Their memory is nuts and so they'll be able to right now learn like anything <laughs> at right right at this stage something else that i've noticed especially in the dance world once you get it around like three four years of age some of the autistic little girls you can also kind of tell that they're autistic because they have um ehlers danlos syndrome and you can tell then you know that too so um eds is uh, a disorder that affects the connective tissue in your body and producing connective tissue it causes lots of trouble as you get older your skin gets more like wrinkly and uh your joints like it, you're in a lot of pain too and uh, because i know that so many little kids that dance are autistic and may have eds i'm specifically careful of little kids doing acro i'm not going to start them on any kind of back bends until they're at, like six seven years old and they can actually support themselves if that happens to these little autistic kids that have eds unfortunately they have back problems and wrist like issues for so long that's an indicator and so i didn't really explain what does eds have to do with autism the only thing is that they are very commonly co-occurring i think that there are connections between autism and a lot of different disorders specifically disorders that have to do with regulating parts of the body uh, another example would be pots is a common whatever a common disorder syndrome for autistic girls to have. That's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. That has to do with regulating your heart rate and blood pressure. So at this point, we're still like, okay, this kid is undiagnosed. This is an undiagnosed autistic girl. So to be undiagnosed still around this time, that probably means that her parents don't really see much of a problem going on. That's also probably likely because her parents are autistic. I mean, at least one of them are probably where else did she get it from you know they're probably like that's fine whatever because they don't know that they're autistic also uh this little girl's also probably verbal probably hyper verbal 
especially as she gets to be going to school. Now that she has some vocabulary to describe her feelings, she will use it. She's been so misunderstood and literally trapped inside of her body for the last few years that, you know, as soon as she gets to learn some words and understand how she can communicate with her parents, she will. Her vocabulary is probably expansive and is going to continue to expand. One other thing about autistic little girls is that they have adult sized emotions. They get upset a lot more frequently than other little girls. They are more like stressed out and weird around people. Autistic girls, like if a new student comes into class, if I don't introduce the student to the class, my autistic kids in the class get weird. And by weird, like they are like looking at the kid and needing to walk away and feeling like physically uncomfortable. And sometimes when they're little, they'll cry and they'll come up to me. And some people will chalk it off as like social anxiety and stuff and are like they're little kids. And to be fair, COVID has done a number on these kids, but also I'm like, as soon as I go, oh, this is so-and-so, they're new, this is what's going on. The kids are like, okay, cool. They just need to be explained things. And I'm like, I get it because I feel the same way when there's a new person in there. I also don't know how to act or what's like, I who are you? What are you? How can I focus on anything else when there's someone else here? Like the, the social dynamics of this room are completely on their side. I have no idea where you are in, in reference to authority with me. Like, that's crazy. I don't know anything. As these little girls start getting to be more social and so put in programs like school and like dance, they're reaching those ages where friends, you know, are being developed. Go sit with someone at lunch kind of vibe. Kind of breaks my heart a little bit um because autistic girls at this age they don't have a lot of friends they seem to have a lot of friends they are usually very talkative and very friendly and feel like they have a lot of friends and feel like they can talk to everybody and the other kids that aren't autistic may not necessarily always feel the same way and it's obvious to me it's not obvious to the little autistic girls and it wasn't obvious to me when i was a little autistic girl either but seeing these kids and how they how they are and how they are around like neurotypicals i'm i'm like i get why kids thought i was weird not that these kids are weird to me they're li they're completely they're a kid but they're different than other kids and it's clear as day and the other kids know it too like everyone knows but everyone tries to pretend like it's not true mm -hmm. everyone tries to pretend like it doesn't exist i don't care to pretend at all i don't want to do that autistic girls are different than their friends what i love is when an autistic little girl finds like another autistic little girl or an autistic little girl or, or a little girl with ADHD or or also a little girl who doesn't know that she's actually into girls uh, and they go and it's like two peas in a pod stick together. Um, usually an autistic little girl will have like one best friend and it's usually one of those people. And I say that because like I, I, that's just, those are the people that connect and vibe best. And yeah, a lot of little autistic little girls, one-on-one, -on -one, really strong friendship. They have different energy levels than all the other kids. Like autistic little girls seem like they have a little bit more energy <laughs> than every than the other kids. Everything just seems like more heightened usually. They have different interests than the other kids. They have different, like they speak differently than the other kids. They speak about different topics than the other kids. Other kids will sometimes flock away from them and it breaks my heart, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's totally true. When they have big emotions, if they don't start learning what emotions feel like and how to regulate them in their body, especially if they have PDA, uh, anytime that they feel threatened, like a loss of autonomy, if they are just having a really big emotion, it's going to result in some kind of reaction from their body. For me, I cried all the time after anything made me feel like, ah, cry. That for some kids, that's gonna look like screaming, biting, hitting, punching, banging their head against the wall. If there is a noticeable pattern of reaction to an unseemingly unpatternable uh, stimuli, I guess, stimulus, maybe it's just the fact that it was <laughs> an emotional reaction and that's a, that's a very autistic thing. Autistic little girls, once they get around the ages like 9, 10, because at this point too, they have also probably also established, they know that like some girls don't like them 
them as much, but they do know that they're really good with talking with adults and they're really good now they start to realize with little kids because now they're not a little kid. And if they are in situations where they're around little kids, they're really good with little kids. It's an autistic thing to be good with kids and adults. <laughs> funky, funky. So the kids at my dance studio will come in and the autistic little girls will come in and everyone else will kind of like go talk to each other and do stuff with each other. The autistic little girls come and talk to me. Now at around this age too, so they're like 10-ish, this is when usually patterns start forming in regard to like social groups and friendships because these kids have been you know, in public school for a few years, or they've been doing activities with each other for a bit that now patterns have emerged, friend groups have formed, and friends are now becoming more long-term. People have had friends for a few years straight. And this is where friends start getting weird for autistic little girls because they're like, huh, I haven't had that really as much. I don't have a friend group. They already have perceptions and I'm not invited in that group. A lot of autistic girls I know move schools a lot or like just move around a lot trying to find places to fit in because they don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> and then puberty starts and puberty is kind of nuts. So I don't know, puberty like whatever you think about that. I think of like being a preteen. I think of like age just, I think of 12 is like, that's where we're starting here. Uh, but when that happens, you're like, oh my God, I am a person. I am actually a person. I feel like I came out of the womb acknowledging my personhood and my existence. And I was like, yep, sounds good. But once I was like, oh, I'm, I'm like a woman now. I'm like, I'm a person because I've experienced now all of the adult things. I know what the adults know. I am a woman too. I know these things. So you're like, wow, so much, so much to realize and change kind of about like your perception of people, your perception of your parents, your perception of relationships. You start being like sexually interested in other people, which is terrifying. If you're an autistic little girl who does not have parents that tells you about your body or about feelings or about your body's sexual feelings or any of that, then you may grow up and be like, whoa, I hate everything that's happening to me and I feel like I want to kill myself. All these changes are way too much and they're not okay. So yeah, this age is a lot of, it's a lot of self-awareness and it's a lot of social self-awareness because everyone's changing. Hormones, puberty, uh, acne, you know, people are smelly. Everything's different and weird. And girls are assholes. Mm -hmm. And autistic girls are often sought after by men. Okay, <laughs> I can't say. In this day and age, the autistic girls are manic pixie dream girls. That's Man the manic pixie dream girl idea is an autistic girl. That's what it is. And so autistic girls are being themselves and guys are like, nice. And the girls are like, fuck you, you know? <laughs> And that's not good or fun for anybody at this time. The autistic girls are clearly weird now here. They're clearly different. They're clearly ostracized. Still undiagnosed though. So still like, yeah, you're like kind of normal, but like not, but like kind of, but not, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with you. You're just like fine over there, really. And this is where the mask, oh, where the mask is basking. Mm-hmm. So throughout the autistic girl's life, she's been noticing patterns of people and behavior that are acceptable and how she also also should be an act in society. Blah, blah, blah. Now that she is in the judgiest stage of it with her peers, it's when her personality becomes the formulation of all of the personalities that she has just accumulated over the years. And she becomes a completely different person. <laughs> Oh my god, the amount of girls that I've seen at like 13 that listen. I think at 23 also, I'm allowed to say that 13 year olds are cringe. Um, but when I say that 13 year olds are cringe, I think that the word cringe too, like cringy stuff, I think is also like autistic stuff. I think people sometimes be like, that's cringe. I'm like, that's just autism, right? Autistic 13 year old girls are cringy, okay? As in like, I can tell that you're faking it. 
I feel the cringe in my physical self. My autistic self physically cringes knowing that you're masking right now. I know it. The mask looks like they are speaking in like only quotes from the internet. Listen, and I still speak in a lot of quotes from the internet. I'm autistic though. <laughs> Scripting is an autism thing. If if they are like if they are just talking in scripts, speaking in words that other people have spoken and not words that they have to think of themselves, if they've got a bank stored of things to say that they don't have to think about, they can just memorize and pull it out. And it works because they've heard all their friends laugh to it 25 times this year already because it's all over the internet. That's an autism thing. I'll see some little girls and when they were five, they were like the most rambunctious running around. Blah, 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 blah. Now they're 12 and they're like, hee hee, oh my God. Like what the heck are you? That wasn't, you know, being like weird, weird. I'm like, don't, that's not you, you know? I'm cringing because that's not you. And because stop it. Don't try to impress me like that. You know, how can I say that? though. That's something that I struggle with. I think other people can kind of feel at this point when someone's masking, when an autistic girl is masking. I think other people can also kind of tell because it's just, just slightly off. No matter how much, how good you are at masking, it's, it's always, it's never, it's never going to look right. Especially very perceptive people, people that have been through a lot of trauma at this point in their lives too. They are also putting on a front of some sort usually. And those people especially will spot you from a mile away and be like fake, fake, fake. Nope. It's true. I'm not kidding. It's happened to me. <laughs> so yeah, I think other, other kids start to like notice it and pick up on it. And this is about where we drop off. This is where I say the pipeline kind of like could go any which way because it kind of just depends on where the mask leads you. I have a shite ton of theories about where undiagnosed autistic people go where undiagnosed autistic adults are and I actually am going to continue to do videos about autistic adults and where they go and where they are. Undiagnosed autistic girls will try to do anything and go anywhere they can be where they think that they're going to end up being okay and safe and that's different for everyone depending on what they're not vibing with at the time. To some that's abusive relationships, to some that's abusing substances. To some, they're doing great and fine, and then they go and become a brain surgeon. To some, they are super depressed and cry and hate their lives. Yeah, it also very much, very much changes if and when they find out that they're autistic. Because finding out that you're autistic is not just finding out. Finding out that you're autistic is unlocking an entire world of understanding you and your brain. Understanding your brain and how it works is like, the biggest factor of being comfortable in yourself, I think. If once you're like, oh, that is okay, then you feel a little more chill about it, you know? Not like, ah, I hate that about me. If you're like, oh, that's just me. Okay, well then I just guess I gotta work with it, you know? That's, at least I know, right? Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, obviously, obviously not every single undiagnosed autistic girl is going to follow this exact whatever. This is just a common one that I see of girls that are getting missed, uh, being diagnosed. If that speaks to you, any autistic little girl out there who's like, hey, or if you're like a full grown woman right now and you're like, that was me as a kid and I've always felt like I resonate with you, Paige. Yeah, probably. So many of us are autistic, I think. It's, it's wild. <laughs> And I hate that I'm doing that now because some people are, are like, are you saying everyone's a little autistic? And I'm like, no, no, that's not. What I am saying is that I am surrounded by autistic people. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's all. That's all, Paul. Peace out, Girl Scout. Okay, that's enough. I need to go. I am finally in the middle of June getting my summer tires put on. Okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. This is the end of the video song. This video is to tell you the video's done. If you're hearing this, it's because the video's done. Go watch another one. Boop, boop. Have a good day. Love you so much. Bye.